competitions are the celebration. Like it is what we work for, but it should be fun. When I am on for my teams as a team coach, I'm a hundred percent on. Hey, tomorrow I need you to do better. But in the moment, you're not going to change anything. So chewing that kid out or you getting really stressed out that a kid is a little bit late or that someone is sick or that someone like just take it one step at a time. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Cheer Biz Podcast. I'm your host, Dan Cotton, and today we are going to talk about how to manage a stressful comp weekend, lessons learned from me as a world's coach of the last 12 plus years, um, <clears throat> some of the things that I've learned, tricks that I use to help be a little less stressed out on competition days. Now, before we get into the episode, head on over to Cheer Gym Owners on Facebook if you're a gym owner, All-Star Cheer Coaches and Owners if you're a cheer coach or a coach and owner, and nextgenowners.com to check out everything we have going on in NextGen. You've definitely got to check out our conferences. We actually have a conference that is tied with All-Star Worlds. It's right at the same time. So if you're going to All-Star Worlds, there is no reason you can't make it to this conference. You're already going to be in Orlando. There's going to be skills tracks, owner's tracks, uh, coach's tracks. It's going to be really, really good stuff for a quick one-day conference right attached to All-Star Worlds. And you've got to check out Danielle's new book, Cheer Gym Owner's Handbook. Uh, it is on sale now. If you haven't got your copy, you need to get your copy. Uh, I finished it this last week and it was absolutely a fantastic read. Even having been friends with Danielle for as long as I have, being an owner in NextGen, the one who is helping create our NextGen curriculum for all of our clients, I still had things that I was folding over pages and highlighting mindsets and things that she was doing as stuff that we could even implement in our own program. Little reminders of great stuff to do. So no matter where you're at in your journey, there is good value in that book. All right. So as I mentioned, I am headed into, or we're, we're talking about stressful comp weekends, and I am headed into what is one of the more stressful competition weekends. And it is my world's team's first stab at a world's bid. This is the first North Pacific Northwest bid that is offered in the season. Uh, it's called uh, ATC uh, Grand Nationals. I have been going to ATC since before it was a varsity brand event, pretty much since the beginning. So I've been going to Bellevue to this event forever since I was coaching before I even owned a gym. It's a staple in the Pacific Northwest. Uh, everyone goes and or or mostly everyone goes, I should say. And it's been a world's bid event for a long time. And we have gotten a lot of world's bids from this event. Uh, we've gotten full paid bids. We've gotten at large bids. And we've even had a couple years where we haven't gotten bids. And those ones sting a lot because it's our backyard. And so we definitely love to go and perform well in our backyard uh, in the Pacific Northwest. We just feel like, you know, we kind of rep here and we want to look and do our best there. So it's a big weekend. There's also paid summit and D2 summit bids, um, at large summit and D2 summit bids. And so it is a really big event. And with that brings a lot of stress. And so I can remember back in my younger days as a world's coach, you know, going into these weekends, I was stressed, like anxious. I would spend so much time watching my routines and watching the competitors and putting together charts and looking at every score that everyone we are going to be competing against has gotten at other events and analyzing and figuring out where, you know, how we might do and looking at their scoring. And I would go into these events and I would be just incredibly stressed. And I would actually have almost no fun until the event was over when we got a bid and then I was celebrating and excited and happy. And I don't, feel like that is a really great way to enjoy my weekends. I think it is far better to enjoy the time and spend the time with my team and enjoying the process and not just being stressed out about whether or not we're going to get a bid. And I know that's easier said than done. And I'm not perfect at it. I'm not perfect at it. And if I'm going to sit here and talk to you about this, I also need to be fully honest and tell you that some of my coaches joke that they're afraid I'm going to have a heart attack one of these days at the front of the mat because I get so, um, they, I would say anxious. I'm not like, I'm not scared. It's just, I, it's fully out of my control. 
at that point in time that my kids take the mat. So the like the transition from warm ups are over to the moment they go onto the floor, like that timeline for me is always very, very um, stressful. I'm just amped. And what it is, is I'm just getting the adrenaline dump of excitement, but I don't have anywhere to channel that because I'm not going to go do a routine. Um, hence why I do so much jumping up and down while my teams perform. So I'm going to talk you through some of the things that help make my competition days much less stressful. Number one is practice your routine. Now, I absolutely mean practicing your competitive routine. That goes without saying. You should be practicing that. You should be practicing full out. And you should be going into your competition weekends um, feeling as prepared and like your team is going to go out and hit a good routine as humanly possible. But that goes without saying. I'm talking about practicing your comp day routine and making sure you have it structured out. And that even can go as detailed as what does your morning routine look like if you have time for a morning routine? Are you eating breakfast? Does that put you in the right headspace? Do you need to do a workout in the morning? Has your team practiced what it looks like to warm up? What is the warm up process like? Are they prepared? Do they know what is going to happen from one thing to the next. And I've talked about this on other episodes, but my kids relatively have it scripted. Like I could sit back and just say next, next. And they would generally know what to do because we've practiced it and we practice it for each event. This event is different. Uh, one of the cool things about it is the venue that it's in. It's like, it's really weird. Everyone who comes from out of state is like, I hate this place. It's odd, but it's like, it's our unique thing. So I like it. Like you first start out on an actual stage, like a performing arts center stage, because that's the only area with ceilings high enough for like level six teams to throw baskets and pyramids. So you, everyone starts down there. You get seven minutes there. Then you go up these like four floor escalator and then you go to another stunt room and then you go to a full spring floor room. And it's just really cool. It's a really unique experience. But if you are used to a normal event, you're not going to be prepared because you're used to the normal warm up style. And it's definitely different. So you want to make sure you practice those things. And so your kids are prepared and it's not something you're having to come up with in the moment and feeling stressed because your kids are stressed because they're doing things they haven't done before in an order they haven't done them before. So practice those things and be really, really prepared. Number two is don't sweat the small stuff drives me crazy when coaches add additional stress on themselves because they're freaking out about little things that really don't matter. Does it matter that the girl brought the wrong eyeliner um, that is not your custom eyeliner that you ordered from your makeup provider? No, it doesn't freaking matter. The judge, I've never seen on my score sheet, this girl had the wrong eyeliner on. Does it matter that so-and-so's high pony isn't two fingers from their forehead? It's three and a half. No, it doesn't freaking matter. I've never seen that noted on a score sheet. Do you want your kids to look the same? Yes. If a kid is five minutes late, is the world going to end? No. Like, don't sweat the small stuff. Let that stuff go. It's going to be okay. Like, yes, hey, tomorrow, I need you to do better. But in the moment, you're not going to change anything. So chewing that kid out or you getting really stressed out that a kid is a little bit late or that someone is sick or that someone like just take it one step at a time, right? If you manage those challenging things in little bite-sized pieces, you'll get through the day much easier. Also, no matter how many times you look at the standings, they don't change. So like don't sweat the small stuff. The scores are the scores are the scores. The routine you put out is a routine you put out. Fight it at AccuScore if you need to fight it. And then what you have is what you have. And you got to just accept it. I used to have a co-coach who literally she couldn't go to bed until all the scores were out and she'd done all the calculations and she knew every single thing. And I'm like, bro, you've got to chill. Like nothing, knowing it now versus knowing it tomorrow morning isn't going to make a difference. It's going to be the exact same thing from one to the other. So you need to make sure that you're like managing yourself. And then when you come into day two, keep the actionable items for your team reasonable. Like they need to know what they can do to get a slightly higher score, but also don't be changing the entire routine. Don't be giving them 92 million corrections because they're just not going to make those. Give them a couple things to focus on and then move on from there. So my number three suggestion is that you need to make comp days enjoyable for yourself. And how I like to do that and my suggestion is to have lots of friends. I know that is easier said than done. 
I've talked about it in other episodes too. There's too much adversarialness in cheer. You can want to compete against someone and want to beat them with still wanting them to find success and be happy and be friends. Like it is entirely possible to want to competitively win, but also be friends with someone. That makes days much more stressful. When I look forward to going to competitions, not just so my kids can compete and win, but also so I can see people that I care about. I get to go to this event and I get to see one of my best friends, Shelly, who I am an owner in NextGen with. I get to see multiple people who are NextGen clients who I'm friends with. I get to see other people who are longtime friends who know my kids and root for my kids and ask me about my routines. And we care about each other. We go and encourage each other's teams at the front of the mat. And it's makes the day so much more enjoyable. I have 30 teams that I want to watch because I care about the owners and the coaches and the kids in those programs. And it makes the day more fun. It makes it less stressful because I I'm caring about more people, which means I'm, I'm kind of spreading myself more thin, but it makes it so I can't be so laser focused on only one thing, only on that one bit. It just, makes things more relaxed. It makes things more enjoyable. It gives me more people to talk to. It also makes it nice when I'm having a rough moment as I have people I can go and discuss things with uh, that are even outside my staff. And or if you don't have friends, meet people, make friends, incur- talk to other humans. We spend so much time just, I'm going to only hang out with my staff and my kids and I'm not going to go introduce myself. Or I've met people who have told me that they were scared to come up and introduce themselves to me, um, that they you know, weren't sure if they should come say hi, or they thought they weren't like good enough to come talk to me, which is laughable to me. Like most coaches who have competed teams at a high level that I know are like some of the most humble and kind people, not all, right? I mean, just like in anything, but I know so many people who've had talented worlds teams who will happily sit down and talk to you about what they've done and how they can help you with your level one team. Like there's no one beneath talking to me, in my opinion. like I've never met anyone where I'm like, ew, why are you talking to me? You're so much less than I am because I've accomplished X, Y, and Z. You guys, it's freaking cheerleading. The only times that I'm like, why are you talking to me is when someone is a bad human and they publicly are a bad human and then they come and talk to me. Because I feel like if you know me at all, you know kind of my standards, uh, my morals, my expectations, and you know that like Maybe we don't agree on that, and that would be a reason not for us to not really sit down and talk. Or maybe I don't understand. Maybe I don't know you, and I need to get to know you better. So, hey, come up and talk to me. I'm willing to have a conversation with just about anyone, and that makes my days more fun. Like I get to go meet and I even meet new people. So not only do I have friends, but I get to talk to other gym owners. And one of the cool things about this event, there's just always this coach's room where there's some snacks and some things. And people actually hang out in the coach's room at this event because there isn't as much uh, ancillary space for people to hang out. So for coaches in between teams, it's like, that's where you go because you don't really have anywhere else to go and hang out because of the layout of this uh, convention center. And it's kind of cool. Like we all are in there. We're all watching routines on the screen and we're like, oh, wow, that was really cool. We end up conversing and talking and it's just really fun. And I, those things make a day less stressful. And it's how I go into a weekend that really should be very stressful. My team's competing for their first world's bid and it is worrisome. You know, are they going to do a great job? Are they going to get a paid bid? Are they going to get an at large? Are they going to get no bid? You know, and they're really in control of all of that. It could be stressful. And by doing these different things, I keep myself more grounded and less stressed out than I used to be as a young 27 year old world's coach. The last one is understand how bid distribution works ahead of time. Know all of those details, educate yourself ahead of time, know who has what, like be in the know and it will reduce your stress level. You know, I have a coach of uh, my level one team who is super stressed about our level one team getting a summit bid. And it's because they've gotten close at the last two events, but they haven't gotten it. And they're actually a really talented team. And I'm very confident that they will get a summit bid, a D2 summit bid. We compete D2. I'm very confident, but she was talking to me and she was like, there's 
19 level one teams. We're never getting a bid at this event. And I'm like, well, one, be confident in your team. And two, once you actually do the math and you look at all the teams that have summit bids already, there's only eight that need them. So it's really not that bad. Um, so make sure you understand how all that works. Understand how bid distribution works. Understand how it's going to be passed out. It's going to decrease your stress level because you're going to be aware. You're going to know the rules. You're going to know how things are going to function. And you're going to just be able to approach the day more confidently. As we leave the episode, I, I want you to remember that if you're stressed out on comp days, you're not alone. There's a lot of us. It Honestly, I view being stressed out, like somewhat stressed out on a comp day as a good thing because it means you still care. It means you still have skin in the game. The day I'm rolling into competition weekends and I'm just like, YOLO, no worries for me, is the day I probably need to stop coaching because I'm not giving the kids 100%. I am not fully invested. And just like I want them to be fully invested in what we are doing, I need to also be fully invested which is, I think, a whole nother episode to talk about what does fully invested look like. Uh, I, you know, Jeff Benson talked a lot about what is giving 100%. And I think I mentioned it on the episode of Houston, we have a problem. But like giving full investment means I'm giving you everything I got at the time, right? And am I fully invested, meaning I sit around and all I do is plan cheerleading for my team's practices? Heck no. I'm sitting here recording a podcast and I go compete tomorrow. Like, could, if I was, fully invested? Would I be doing routine reviews and sending my kids notes and doing all this stuff right now? Probably. Uh, would it help anything? No. Does it mean I'm not fully invested? No. When I am on for my teams as a team coach, I'm 100% on. Just like when I'm doing a podcast, I'm 100% on for my podcast. I'm not checking my phone. I'm not sending and receiving emails. I'm not doing any of that stuff. I'm here for you. So find that... like that balance between I'm being fully invested in what I'm doing, but I'm setting healthy boundaries and guidelines for myself to keep my stress level in a manner that I'm not going to die at the age of 30. Maybe some of these things help. If you have other great ideas or ways that you manage your stress, you know, let me know. Uh, there are so many other things to do, right? Make sure you eat, um, make sure you take care of your body, drink lots of water, uh, all those things, but just get through the day. You got it. All right, as we leave the episode, I don't have any marching orders for you other than remember when you go to competitions, competitions are the celebration. Like it is what we work for, but it should be fun. It should be an enjoyable process. And yes, when you have a rough day, it sucks to be on the positive side of things, but that's a part of the journey. If you're going to have a growth mindset, you have to accept the failures when they come and know that it is there is an opportunity for growth there. All right, everyone. I hope you enjoyed the episode. As always, check out some of the other podcasts. Let's Talk Cheer and the Cheer Mom podcast. Check out our conference in Orlando. It's going to be amazing. And we have our summer Dallas conference dates out as well. So many amazing things coming. I uh, can't wait for you to hear about all of them. Some of them are even kind of behind the curtain still. But some big stuff is coming and we're really excited to be bringing it all to you. And with that, we'll catch you on the next episode. Music